an unwitnessed fall in the patient with epilepsy. So we don't, we're not expecting there to be significant um, force in the fall. It, it was presumably a fall from standing. This pattern of density here, I would certainly call that atelectatic change. And here's the report on this patient. Um, bilateral posterior lower lobe atelectasis consolidation, which may be infective but could represent contusion in the context of trauma. So I don't think that's a very helpful report. I would say this patient clearly had bibasal atelectasis. We don't want to get into consolidation and say they have infection unless there's some particular clinical supportive evidence. And really it's unlikely that an individual would have developed bilateral contusional change in their lungs from a presumed fall from standing. Here's a patient whose um, sepsis query cause. Again, we've got that very characteristic atelectatic pattern at both lung bases symmetrically. Here's the report, bilateral low lobe consolidation. And this patient had presented with previous biliary sepsis and cholecystectomy, admitted with sepsis. So I think in this case, the radiologist has diagnosed infective change in the lungs, they've clearly said so in their conclusion, where they um, where they really have no business diagnosing that. And that could of course distract the clinician's attention away from uh, a septic focus related to the patient's gallbladder um, and, uh, uh, or biliary tree elsewhere in the abdomen. So distracting somebody away from another cause is um, also dangerous. It would divert their clinical attention from another site and they could start treating this patient for presumed pneumonia which they which we don't really have evidence to suggest that they have. Here's a patient who collapsed at home. Again it's unlikely that such a patient would have sustained significant contusional injury to their lungs um, unless they had a very significant fall which we probably would have been told about. Aspiration is something you might think about but it's not quite the typical pattern. Again, just like so many of these other cases, subpleural um, density here um, in a very similar pattern to the cases you've seen previously. This is most likely to be atelectatic in nature. Bilateral posterior lower lobe consolidation suggestive of contusion. Here's a patient who fell from their scooter. Uh, going at 15 miles an hour, exactly the same pattern there. I would call this atelectatic change. There we are on the mediastinal windows. And here's the report. Possible lung contusion in the lower lobes. So it's not entirely um, of no consequence to diagnose somebody with lung contusions. Lung contusions are pretty severe and they're certainly going to escalate the patient to a greater degree of observation. Uh, if you've had a se severe enough injury to have, uh, to have bleeding into your alveoli, into your lung parenchyma, then you may well be tri transferred to high dependency unit. So we shouldn't diagnose lung contusions inappropriately and I don't really think that there's any particular, it was particularly any evidence to uh, any firm evidence to call those on the basis of the CT findings. Now I'm just going to show you what proper lung contusions look like. Here's a patient who was run over not once but twice by a car and you can see here we have extensive contusional change in the lungs, irregular margins, air bronchograms just forming here, some over here, patient's got a chest strain in, here we have a very extensive area of opacification with an air bronchogram in the left upper lobe, some um, uh, subcutaneous emphysema here just adjacent to the chest wall. And here we are with a little further similar change um, in the lower lobe. And already you can see a little bit of cavitation which is what you often see in lung contusions. And here is a um, scan the following day, you can see extensive cavitation within that area of contusional change, which is not uncommon. So this is very different to those 
curling densities at the lung bases, this is proper contusional change, and what we saw previously in many cases simply isn't. Here's a patient who had a um, proctocolectomy performed, and um, this uh, our next scan is 18 days postoperatively. We can see well-defined margins, clustered air bronchograms. This is bibasal uh, collapse. 29 days. It's a bit more extensive on the at the right base, but it's rather resolved on the left, which is in keeping with uh, areas of collapse. 36 days. Another scan. This was a CTPA because the patient had some chest pain. And you can see these areas of atelectasis are, are still present. Another one, 43 days, another CTPA. This CTPA was actually positive. And um, we can see again extensive atelectatic change, these clustered air bronchograms. So this is a patient with extensive postoperative bibasal atelectasis. And just to show again on the sagittal view, we can see here the volume loss within the area of collapse. And this is just the 43-day um, uh, report, the, the day 43 CTPA, day 43 post-op CT report saying partial atelectasis consolidation in both the lobes. So again, the person unable to distinguish between the two, they are different diagnoses. Atelectasis would be treated with Pain relief, chest physiotherapy, consolidation, we would assume that to be due to infection in the postoperative setting and need to treat the patient with antibiotics. Um, and uh, there was concern about COVID-19 because at the time of recording, we're in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic. Here's a patient with right-sided chest pain for one week. This, this has an irregular margin, this area of pacification with a standing tall air bronchogram. This I would call an area of consolidation. And we have a CT scan from uh, a couple of months previously, uh, three months before. I know it doesn't prove anything, but certainly that area was clear then. This was an outpatient. There wasn't any particular reason to suspect the patient would have atelectasis in that area, and they recovered afterwards. Here's a patient with right pleuritic chest pain. Again, um, an outpatient in this case. Um, we had this uh, because there was a query of a tumor. You can see there's a wedge-shaped uh, volume sparing area of opacification in keeping with consolidation. And if we look on the coronal view, the volume is maintained. This resolved after antibiotic treatment. And here, in contrast, is a patient with partial right middle lobe atelectasis, where we can see the volume loss and the clustered air bronchograms. And we can see that here, extensive volume loss in the right middle lobe, sharply defined borders, clustered air bronchograms. This is right middle lobe atelectasis. Contrasting again, here's a patient with consolidation in the left lower lobe, extensive um, volume taken up by this abnormality, spaced air bronchograms, irregular margins, and in the patient here we look at the retention of volume in a case of consolidation, extensive consolidation here, and at the border there's some interstitial change because these processes do of course overlap. And here's that patient on the um, axial view. Extensive consolidation. Volume is maintained. Now, of course, it's not easy. Here's a patient who's got status epilepticus and a ventilator. What is this? I would certainly say this was an area of atelectasis. The volume seems to be lost. Personally, I would also call this atelectasis because of the position of the abnormality, the clustered nature of the bronchograms. That all leads me to think this is most likely to be a, uh, an area of atelectasis, but I'm not 100% sure. And here's the report on that patient. 
bilateral lower lobe consolidation, which I really don't think the person uh, should have said. I think those are more in keeping with uh, atelectatic changes, but that again is just. Here's another patient post laparotomy. I think this patient's scans are um, instructive because I believe they demonstrate two contrasting processes. Here at the right base, I would probably call this atelectasis. Again, it's not particularly easy, but I think that's most likely. And this area here of irregular areas of consolidation, irregular pacification, I would think that is more likely due to consolidation um, rather than atelectasis. In fact, I wouldn't. Call, I certainly wouldn't call that atelectasis. I would call that consolidation. Um, possibly uh, uh, aspiration as a cause in that setting. So I would say this is probable consolidation. That's how I would report that. I would be not quite sure about this, but probably report it as atelectatic change. So I'm going to try and bring this to a uh, close pretty soon. But just two more cases here. So this is a patient one day post percutaneous coronary intervention. We can see that very characteristic appearance of bibasal atelectasis here, that curling pattern where the atelectatic lung tissue is being compressed by the adjacent pleural fluid. It's very commonly seen. Don't call this consolidation. Here's a patient who fell off the ladder the fell off a ladder the day prior to their attendance at hospital. Bibasal pattern. Very characteristic of atelectasis, not consolidation. It's quite unlikely the patient would have developed bilateral pneumonia during that period of time. They went home the same day. Um, so this is the pattern of atelectasis, which you've seen in many um, cases now. And I hope you've seen that there is a characteristic pattern to this. So what would I say in summary? Try not to mix up consolidation and collapse where you can. We get volume loss and collapse, and it's maintained in consolidation. A symmetrical biobasal process very much favours collapse. We've seen that characteristic appearance. There's also a characteristic appearance where we have collapse secondary to a pleural effusion, and it's important not to diagnose, not to um, mix those two, the two up, because an inappropriate diagnosis of consolidation with a pleural effusion may lead to the patient having an unnecessary pleural aspiration. Both processes have air bronchograms. It's not always a perfect way of telling them apart, but in atelectasis they are more clustered and in consolidation they are more spaced apart. But the most important thing is you have to is the, the two most the, the two important things that you have to remember are telling the difference between collapse and consolidation does matter. It's not always easy, but we have to try and it's when you start trying to do it, trying to tell them apart and thinking about it, that your success rate will improve. And when you look back at patients previous, you can um, learn a lot and improve your confidence in distinguishing between diagnosing the correct conditions and, very important, not diagnosing collapse, consolidation or contusion when they're not present. So that's the end of this talk. Thank you very much.